At least none of the invited. When Americans become the enemy of the state. Some facts. The American Material Support Statute is 18 U.S.C. Section 2339B. In 1996, U.S.C. Professor Ralph Fertig challenges the statute in court. June 21, 2010 The U.S.A. Supreme Court upholds the constitutionality of the statute. The story continues. There are many tangential talking points surrounding the main issue at hand. Should a U.S. citizen be able to hold meetings with foreign organizations considered to be in a state of cajus belly with the United States of America? It is the responsibility of the American president via the Department of State to enter into diplomatic relations with foreign nations. Take a look at the U.S. Constitution for the particulars. Since when do university teachers know anything about the world? Have they ever had real jobs? Do they really get anywhere with their short-term field research? Do they even understand the issues or what statecraft is? Book knowledge is not always applicable. Let us begin with a simple definition of terrorism. It is an attack against civilians in an attempt to send a message and garner support for their actions. If a terrorist does not get the attention she is seeking, then her actions are pointless and without energy. If everyone condemns an action, then the perpetrator has no support and will be punished by everyone's disapproval. If on the other hand, the terrorist has sympathizers or empathizers, then her actions are certainly worthwhile. Your political research and history demonstrates how this works. Some Americans, and Europeans, Muslims, and others, believe that the terrorist attack on September 11, 2001 was a legitimate expression of political displeasure by those without an army to invade the USA. Some cite Israeli foreign policy, globalization, and other policy-related issues as legitimate grievances for military action whether via the techniques of terrorism or standard armies. Since this is true, then the terrorists are supported by both their own ideological adherents and by American citizens. How can this be, you ask? As I mentioned above, a successful terrorist needs public support at some percentage level. That is certainly the case during the present time. Some American citizens use the same arguments of legitimization as the terrorist attackers. I know. This is astounding, right? Some Americans hold meetings with ideological enemies of liberal democracy and do not understand that this supports the terrorists' propaganda and agenda. Since the government is led by many who understand the dynamics of political violence and terrorism, it seems that they would understand how to go about negotiating diplomatic interaction with ideological enemies. What could an American teacher possibly bring to the table while negotiating with the person who rejects the ideology of liberal democracy? In general, they reject separation of church and state, women's rights, children's rights, religious freedom, political freedom, social freedom, physical freedom, economic freedom, voting with representation, intermittent peaceful transfers of power, freedom of expression and thought, freedom of the arts and sciences, and so on. So, what should the state do when a portion of its domestic citizenry agrees and supports in various guises enemies of the state? Are these citizens, then, enemies of the state? Some states respond with ethnic cleansing, genocide, and persecution. The U.S. government has promulgated laws regulating a citizen's right to negotiate on behalf of the government with those entities considered to be enemies of the state. In summation, if you believe that terrorists are merely expressing their political grievances, then you are supporting them in their endeavors. Furthermore, if you meet with the terrorists to negotiate reconciliation, then you are supporting them in their endeavors. Both of these scenarios serve to support terrorism as defined by everyone who has written a book on the subject. Dividing public perception in order to conquer is a powerful tactic. You are emboldening the enemy of your state. Some would say thank you and some would say cease and desist.